Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton for ID People. I'm here at ID World in Rio de Janeiro. I'm joined by Frederic Plekensteiner. Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for stopping by. You've been presenting this morning on the topic of Nearfield Communications, NFC. Um, what's the, what's the take-up of, of that technology, particularly here in Latin America? Well, basically, NFC um, allows um, the user uh, to use their phone as an additional device. Mm -hmm. It can display, the, the, you, can you can make use of the um, display of the phone to display your token balance, to reload your tokens. You don't need an extra device anymore at the transit authority to go to, to uh, load your cards, to um, look at your uh, transit cards, uh, and so on. You have your smartphone. Okay. Additionally, it uh, will allow the users um, to um, access additional services um, like uh, the nearest ta taxi um, stand, the nearest bike rentals, uh, mm -hmm. and so on. And furthermore, you know, because the whole solution needs to give benefits to everybody, otherwise it's not going to happen. Mm. So it, um, the ones who pay for it are the transit authorities, okay. and they need to have some benefits. Well. The main benefits they have is, well, they can get rid of their terminals and therefore of, of their um, uh, loading terminals for the carts, and therefore less maintenance, less vandalism, um, less anything, so cost mm -hmm. savings right there. But much more important, with NFC, they have direct access to the user device, which, allow, which uh, gives them enormous opportunities for advertising, mm. uh, and um, offer ring of other services, yeah, additional yeah. value added services. Okay, well, that makes perfect sense, and I can see that the um, the smartphone is pretty ubiquitous, so we all have them with us. What about in an environment, for example, may, maybe here in Rio, where there are people that do have smartphones, there are people that don't? Would there be two systems running in parallel, or how would that work? Well, first of all, you don't need to upgrade the, cur uh, the current system um, because you can run it for a while in parallel because you can use existing mm. infrastructure. So because you have already the RFID infrastructure with the RFID card and the phone communicates the same way with right. uh, the gates and so on. Uh, secondly, um, you know, NFC um, attach rate to phones is rather low so far. You have seen, uh, for example, the iPhone 5S, well, uh, just announced and still no NFC. Mm. Um, so it will take a while. Current attach rate is about 15% okay. uh, or so, 14 something the statistics says, uh, and in 2015 to be forecasted at about 35%, um, okay. uh, roughly. And what we have done as AMS, we have, to, uh, we have developed a technology of, an, it's an active boost technology which allows to make NFC so small that you can integrate NFC into your current SIM card. Okay. And with that, you can get it basically across all phones. And therefore, you know, and there is no phone anymore without mm. a display and without a f some kind of smart functionality, even if it's not a smartphone. Mm. Um, okay. And uh, with that, you can yeah. have your your whole um, infrastructure in place very, very quickly. Why do you think there is a resistance from companies like Apple to put NFC in their in their latest models? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> it's a mystery. <laughs> that's, that's really a mystery. But uh, I think it will it will it will just take uh, yeah. a while, and it will take a while also till the infrastructure is um, is built. It's, it's always a, a chicken and egg situation. Yeah. You have always yeah. the situation that um, at one point uh, services need to be there. At the other point, uh, at the other hand, um, the infrastructure technology need uh, infrastructure. the technology need to be there. The infrastructure need to be there, and, and the it goes need hand to in pay hand. For one yeah. and one has to pay for the other. Well, it's certainly the uh, having having that application in the in the SIM card seems the ideal solution for that. So that makes a lot of sense. With respect to the systems that you're talking about with re, um, for transit, are they actually systems that are in beta or currently being rolled out? Where, where are they in terms of project process? These are basically just uh, systems uh, which are currently um, in engineering studies okay, and uh, really development. concept developments and so on. And there's okay. no rollout yet of okay. those. But, um, 
it's coming and we heard another speech of a gentleman from uh, France uh, where uh, you know French like this mm. kind of technology yeah. uh, historically and they were one of the first adopters of it and uh, it seems that there is actually um, more rapidly uh, coming and it will coexist mm. uh, as we said before you know phones with um, NFC cards with RFID cards yeah. and so on it will be yeah well. well it just seems practical to have all those cards resident in a soft way on on the on the um, on the smartphone rather than having to Carry all those loyalty cards, you know, Oyster cards, different different cards for, for different applications. In terms of in terms of then connecting back behind that, there's 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 a big data engine that that then drives all that. All but that this is technology. basically this basically exists. Mm. This exists for the current card. You know, you, the only thing is you put your card into um, the phone, and everything uh, which is the terminal connects already to the back end system. So now you have uh, your phone connecting to the back end system for yeah. the internet. So yeah. the, the cloud service is already there. Yeah. So you really don't have to do a lot of changes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's some software adaptions, yeah. but not a lot. And I can buy online, so I don't need to do standing in line to top up my card, which is the bit that drives me crazy when I and get this to is the very game. this is very important to bring people um, like uh, like me to make it attractive um, mm. to go to tran uh, public transport because you know otherwise I still like my car you know so you need to offer me something uh, to make public transport um, appealing yeah and I think uh, standing in line is definitely not, not appealing, appealing to me. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely. I think it's interesting though. I think there's a generational change because I look at the way we use transport and the way, for example, my children use transport and they would be much happier if it was all on their, all on their device and they have access to kind of a hybrid choice of, of transports rather than having to own a vehicle, park it, insure it, do all those kind of things. So those kind of hybrids, where they use things like Zipcar, you know, this short-term hourly car rentals that you pick up one place, the bikes um, that we have in London, the, the subway, and being able to integrate them on one device makes sense. Yes. And maybe near NFC is the solution that, that allows that to happen. I think so. I think NFC will offer the security, convenience, uh, and really um, will be the bridging technology to make this happen, to get everything into your phone. Yeah. And it's also, you know, how often do you forget your wallet already at home? Uh, well, it's not quite as often, but um, your phone, you never Almost forget. Never. You, you go back for that. Exactly. Yeah, that's certainly the case. Well, Frederick, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for stopping by, and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you very much. Thank it was you. A pleasure.